Hello everyone, Brendan McCauley here with the Theology of the Body Institute. In today's video, we're going to talk about how does the theology of the body help college students in particular? If you're new to this channel, I first want to invite you to like and subscribe. This channel is all about journeying together into the truths of our humanity and what we're really made for, which in today's world, we need to hear. So I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel. So to set the stage, I wanna talk with you about this orange. I wanna ask you a question. What if I started peeling this orange? I took the actual orange in the center, I threw it away, and then I just started to eat and gnaw on the peel. What would you say? I asked some college students this, and one person just said, Brendan, I would say you are crazy. I think that's a normal response, but what's the loving thing to do? I don't think the loving thing to do is to say, Brendan, you do you. Keep eating the peel. You're not affecting me, so you do you. Keep eating the peel. I think the loving thing to do is to say, Brendan, you're missing out. You're missing out on the juice, the glory, the goodness that's inside. I think the loving thing to do would to direct me to the goodness inside. And I think in today's culture on college campuses, the question of identity, who am I? We tend to say, you do you. As long as you're not affecting me, be whoever you want to be. I watched this YouTube video that kind of summarizes this. It's this guy named Steven Crowder. He goes to college campuses and he sets up a table with a sign out. And in this particular video on the sign, it said, there are two genders, prove me wrong. Of course, a big crowd comes to him, is yelling at him, arguing with him. And one guy finally sits down to have a discussion with Steven. And he says, you know, Steven, you have the right to be whoever you wanna be. And Steven said, well, okay, so if I said I'm a bobcat and I want you to treat me like I'm a bobcat, then what would you say? And he said to Steven, you know, Steven, if you truly thought you're a bobcat, I hope you're the best bobcat there is out there. And Stephen rightly so said that I don't know if we can have a conversation because the question of identity, who am I, and vocation, what am I called to do, how should I act, is meaningless. You can be whoever you want to be and you can do whatever you want to do. I don't think the loving thing to do is to say that, is to say just you do you. I think the loving thing to do is to direct everyone into the truth of our humanity because as Christ says, the truth is what sets us free. And this is what Pope St. John Paul II did with the theology of the body. He brought to light these two questions on identity, who am I, and on vocation, what am I called to, what am I made for? And I think college students in particular need to hear this vision of the theology of the body, of who we are. Because college students in particular are wrestling with these questions, I would say the most. They're on their own. They're trying to figure out the career they wanna take, the man and the woman they want to become. This was me going through college. And it wasn't until my junior year in college when I encountered the Theology of the Body at the Theology of the Body Institute on their five-day course. And I was in tears every day. Why? Because as Christ said, the truth is what sets us free. And when I heard this compelling vision of the truth of who we are, the biblical vision of who we are, I was internally set free. I began to see in a different way, to see others with purity, not as objects, but as images of God. I began to see myself differently. I began to see God differently. And you know, the argument would be, well, Brendan, that's your perspective. Other people have different perspectives. How do you know yours is better or clearer? Well, imagine this. Imagine I went to the doctor because I had blurry vision and I need a prescription. I needed glasses to see better. How would I know if the glasses I get are more clear? You just know. If I put it on, I will instinctively know if it's clear or not. Same with the theology of the body. We all have lenses of how we see the world and ourselves. 
and I put on these lenses, the biblical lenses of who we are, and I began to see more clearly where I was like, this is it. This is the truth that sets us free. And so that's why I'm actually doing what I'm doing today. It's because I feel like I need to share it with others. And of course, the theology of the body sheds a bright light on the meaning of the body. And on college campuses, because I work on a college campus, I get to see how the majority of people view the body. And there's usually two ways people view it. One, they view it as it's God. They idolize it. They obsess about it. They go and they work out three times a day with cut off shirts where they're pretty much all of their skin is exposed. They idolize it. And then there's the other spectrum. They hate it. They think it's gross or disgusting or shameful. And I think in particular, a lot of women view their bodies as not beautiful. And so it's this more of this hatred. Theology of the body sheds a bright light onto both of these spectrums. God did not say, behold, it's very bad and gross. God did not say, behold, it's your ultimate idol. No, he says, behold, it's very good. The body is the expression of the person. The body is an image of God. And once we begin to see this clearly and understand this is when we begin to become more free and we begin to know how we're called to live. And it will compel us has it compelled me to try to share it with as many people as possible because the truth is what sets us free. So again, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel. This is where we can drink in the truth of our humanity, the truth of the theology of the body, what it means and how it can affect our lives. I want to invite you to share it with any family or friends that you think would enjoy this channel. And we'll see you next time. God bless.